Mike Zero, Japan, Charlie Foxtrot. A very good afternoon to you, Fritz, and uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, Sierra Alpha 7, Foxtrot Kilo Radio. This is Mike Zero, Juliet Charlie Foxtrot. The name this side is Mark. That's Mike Alpha Romeo Kilo, and I'm in the town of Sidcup in Kent, so about uh, 20 kilometres southeast from the city of London. I'll give you a report on the next over, but you're about a five and five to me, uh, and I'll give you the technical details once I've confirmed that. Over to you, Fritz, SA7FKRM0JCF. Okay, so fantastic. Uh, Mark Alpha Romeo Kilo 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 I was before listening or calling to her in Chinese station, but uh, <laughs> they come here up to five and five. Uh, same loud uh, signal like yours, but uh, looks like you're running too much power as to that uh, the possibility to hear me it's not so big. I'm a Mickey Mouse station, so very weak here. I'm, I'm, I'm running here in <coughs> 300, 400 watts or 500 watts if it goes out here from an Arcom solid state on a Homebrew in the, uh, uh, V antenna, that's an NFET horizontal um, a long wire antenna here in the Swedish forest between the trees. However, you're up 5-5 uh, uh, in the QSB, but with the preamp on, so not the best condition, but uh, uh, there is not a surprise because we are in the middle of a uh, X1 solar flare. So I'm very surprised that you hear me, Mark. M0, Julia Charlie Foxtrot. From Sierra Alpha 7, Foxtrot Killer Radio. Yeah, Sierra Alpha 7, Foxtrot Killer Radio, M0, JCF returning. And yeah, just confirmed, 5 and 5 also uh, to me, uh, Fritz. Uh, today I'm using an old Yesu Fox Tango 757 Golf X-Ray. Uh, I'm seeing about uh, 70 watts, maybe a bit less. Uh, not quite the 100 watts this radio can do. And the antenna is is a 5 8 wave vertical antenna, but for 10 metres. So a little bit off tune for this band. It seems to be working well. The QSB is around about uh, two S points. You're just dropping down to Santiago 3, so perfectly readable. And yes, the X1 solar flare. Well, we've had lots and lots of solar flares uh, the last few weeks. The sun has been very, very active with uh, flares, coronal mass ejections, etc. And uh, But the sunspots all seem to be uh, crowded on one side of the sun. I think at the moment we're at a lower sun sunspot count and um, once the sun starts to rotate uh, from the far side round to our side uh, the sunspot numbers do tend to go up but you know it comes with the risks of um, blackouts um, certainly the lower bands have also been affected by that recently but uh, yeah great to hear you on I did suspect maybe some sporadic E and that was the mechanism that we're talking today I'm not sure SA7 FKR M0 JCF condition here between us with the short skip possibility but uh, yeah uh, I have also the space with the live website open and get uh, get hourly uh, alarms here with uh, sun flares and uh, new sun eruptions so it's it's a nightmare what the sun doing well we see it on uh, last days here on radio it's just a 40 and air and 20 meter band a few stations but not so lot um, the moment here in scandinavia it's only possible to work really in the night time but not in the day okay mark uh, did you hear before also the chinese station the bravo delta 8 uh, charlie november lima he was he was uh, uh, calling a few times but uh, um, uh, looks like he have the same problem as as we here in Europe, Roger. 
Yeah, QSL on that. No, I didn't hear him. Um, I heard you try to call him, and you obviously could hear him because um, uh, he was, uh, you know, obviously you got his call sign, but I couldn't hear him. And um, I find F-layer propagation the last uh, few days hasn't been too good. In the evenings, I found F-layer uh, down to uh, Brazil. You know, the usual places, Brazil, Argentina, the big stations have been coming through uh sort of between sort of just before uh, sunset and just after sunset maybe on the gray line for us so uh yeah south america of course north america now has pretty much gone on 10 and 12 meters until um the end of summer but you know we, we just try it as i say i'm like you i'm not using a steerable antenna so uh my antenna is just fixed uh for 12 meters so is wherever my power goes i will take any con Text there, Fritz. Back to you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Well, it, it would be an <coughs> interesting station. He was very loud, so also by five by five approximately. Uh, his QDH is very interesting. He is in the middle of China, in the province of uh, Sichuan. So that's uh, a very interesting area. Not uh, on the coast. It's really in the middle of uh, China, and he was very loud. Uh, this was very interesting. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah you are I'm absolutely right with the S-layer. Looks like uh, some station. I was before talking a few kilocycles up in on the on the 10 meter band. Uh, the funny thing, it was just one station to hear on the 10 meter, and was uh, it was a station from South Africa. If you're interested, it was uh, Leon Zulu Sierra 6 Romeo Foxtrot. Um, if you want to have a check, let me see the frequency was 28420 or 28419.7. So it was a funny frequency. But maybe you catch him later on, Roger. Yeah, OK. Well, the thanks for the heads up on that. I've just made a note of that in my paper logbook. I've just come off of 10 metres and I actually found uh, 10 metres to be very, very quiet. But uh, yes, yeah, South Africa is always a possibility at this time of the year on 10. And uh, I'll maybe uh, in a short while I'll go there and um, have a look. But, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a big, big DX chaser per se, Fritz. I, I like to talk to anyone anywhere in any mechanism um, with SSB of course I like also AM and some FM but uh, I don't do CW or the digital modes so I do sort of miss out on those um, very narrow bandwidth signals uh, when conditions are, are quite difficult but uh, yeah I may go back to 10 metres but you know it, it's okay sitting on here 12 uh, your, your, uh, your signal actually peaking almost 5 and nine so it was a uh, five and eight and when it's strong it's very very strong uh compliments on your audio as well you do have a fantastic audio uh the microphone that i'm using for it is a very old it's older than the radio it's a ham master 4200 uh they were marketed under different brands but this one's ham master 4200 uh, desk microphone must be about 45 50 years old and um, I'm just wondering how I sound. But uh, I don't know what microphone you're using, but uh, you're sounding uh, quite superb when the signal strength is um, Santiago 8. Back to you. Yeah, Roger. Thank you very much. Well, by the way, did you know that your trigger minus 1.5 on your audio, you did your tendon trigger. So it's a mix between AM and SSB, Roger. Uh, sorry, you, you, you know what? As you said that, I heard the, uh, you said the trigger and you gave me some, uh, figures and I heard AMSSB. But at that very point, the important point, uh, your signal dropped, uh, below S3 and just into my slightly high noise floor today. Uh, say that again, Fritz. Okay. Yeah, you're up 5.9 now here, so. <laughs> Okay, to the first, the information about my audio, I'm using here broadcasting equipment, that's a Shure Studio microphone or a stage microphone, which is very, very old, it's uh, a lot older than yours, this is an um, original, which uh, means it's an uh, aluminium um, full mic uh, called the Elvis Presley microphone, uh, take a look on the Kira set you see on my webpage. 
photos here from my station, and uh, I do use here a fully broadcasting station on the audio right in the front, uh, on the, also on the SSP transmitter. And uh, I'm using the 7300 ICOM actually now, and in the waterfall on your signal, I saw that uh, that uh, your signal, what you're sending, is not a and, and 100% clean SSP signal. There is also uh, on one on one um, point a little trigger come by minus 1.5 kilohertz. So that sounds more. Yeah, I don't know. It's not easy to explain. It um, sounds uh, like a little bit of an echo. Um, but it looks like uh, it this happens uh, because about the old transceiver. This is a possibility. It's not a misfunction, but it sounds um, um, more like the old tube sound, Roger. Ah, uh, QSL, understand what you're saying. I think maybe it's um, th there's a two two possibilities. Uh, this this transceiver does drift slightly. I keep correcting for that. So apologies if you're following me across the dial. Um, but uh, the, the the other thing is the ALC on this radio. It's very very touchy. Very difficult to keep it in the grey. So what I do is I have to back off the uh, microphone control control very very slightly and uh, the drive controls very slightly i mean the drive control shouldn't make any difference on ssb but uh, also i've got the the microphone um very very uh low i've got it turned right the way down uh, this microphone is also very sensitive if i just give it the the control a very slight uh twist i mean a minuscule tiny tiny twist then um it does it does actually uh, um, make me overmodulate, uh, especially on AM. On AM, it gives me severe clipping. Um, also, I, I, it's a very, very bad habit of mine, Fritz. I tend to shout. I'm very loud when I speak. Um, always have been, and so consequently, sometimes, especially when I'm very interested in the conversation, I get very loud and maybe a bit too close. So, uh, with that in mind, what I'll do is I'll try to back off from the microphone and uh, see that I don't destroy your ears. Back to you. No, no problem, Mark. This is just for information. You're sounding good. You have a Q5, so that's no problem. Of course, it's not, an, it's not a broadcast voice, but, but uh, this sounds more the old uh, tube uh, radios. Um, it's not a crystal clear modulation like the, all the new transceivers or... Uh, no, forget it. It is, it is not a critic. It's just the information about that um, uh, you are very wise by the way you go from plus 1.5 to minus 2 kilohertz so the boundaries of your voice is very wide but um, <coughs> maybe that's the, the problem with the sound but uh, you're absolutely correct and top to understand so there is no any uh, distortion or something like that it, it sounds different so if you're not saying your name um, next time, I know absolutely uh, where you are, Roger. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And I've made a big note of all of this information as well, Fritz. It's, um, it's always interesting when, you know, when we can analyze, uh, what's happening, uh, with our signals. I think, though, it's possibly a combination of a slightly, probably the ALC on this radio is probably just a, a little bit too much. Um, it's probably overdriving the, uh, the output. And, uh, that's what's causing the roughness. As I say, I sit back from the microphone. I have to be very aware of my surroundings. And um, that's the way that, you know, I, I, I don't know until people tell me. And I think uh, you're quite correct that um, the ALC problem would also suggest why my signal is wider than maybe it could be. Um, it might be some time, you know, I, I need to uh, have this radio open and uh, start to look, you know. 
it, it's very old. It's it's more than forty years old. Um, it's about the seventh um, seven five seven GX that I've ever owned. Uh, this one I bought just a few months ago with um, with the tuner, the Yasu um, FC seven five seven AT, the auto tuner. And uh, when I, when I got the radio, I was very surprised that I couldn't get on sixty meters, and that's because this radio hasn't been unlocked. It hasn't been wide banded and these radios are very very easy to wide band you just open up the uh the cover and uh, there's a switch inside there's no soldering no diodes no clipping of wires and so I i'm just wondering if this radio was used way back when and then was just stored away for many years and of course i bought it and uh, just plugged it in and started using it so there there is a possibility you know some small alignment inside uh maybe a few capacitors could be changed but uh i think there's a, a combination here of alc issues um overdriving the uh front uh, uh, sorry the, the final of the radio and uh, possibly just me with my big mouth and my loud microphone fritz back to you <laughs> okay so let me go back on the fragment so i think uh, i think uh, we i found out what's happened you are a few kilohertz, oh no, a few hertz off the frequency. That's the that's the <laughs> that's the real uh, thing. What I found it out. So it looks strange in the waterfall. If if you have the possibility, uh, then check uh, your modulation on a web SDR or a Kiwi SDR. You will see in the waterfall what I mean. There is um, there is a trigger by minus fifteen hundred hertz from the zero uh, frequency of your voice. So, uh, you know, I'm talking about the sound waves of, of, from your voice, uh, not from 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 uh, the radio himself. We're talking about just the, the audio. And there, it looks like uh, by uh, 1.5 uh, kilohertz down uh, from the zero, from the center, uh, it looks like a trigger, so it, it, it hears, it sounds like there is a second mark talking with a different high of the voice, so that's the, this is what I mean. So, if I'm shifting uh, up and I go five, her, five hertz up, then it's gone. So that's, um, I, I, I'm pretty sure it would be uh, the age of the transmitter. Uh, it's not any misfunction, it is uh, off the frequency. And funny is, uh, if I go on uh, 2495, then it's gone. And it's a crystal clear modulation vibration. Yeah, oh, well, thanks for that uh, great an analysis from you. Very in-depth and uh, better than just saying uh, your audio sounds rubbish, Mark. Yes, I'm aware that this radio does actually drift and it drifts with time, um, especially when I'm doing long overs. I suppose it gets warm. I think it's, it's just one of these things, Fritz. You know, I, I do have more modern radios. I have an IC7300 and uh, a fantastic radio absolutely uh, fantastic but you know these older radios yeah they can be hard work and they can be uh, you know that they can cause problems to other people but um, you know I think once we're made aware of those and we can compensate or maybe even repair then um, it's okay but you know I, I hear many hams quite modern hams um, uh, who you know buy new equipment and all they try to do is absolutely smash everything out of it so everything is turned up to 11 and then uh, you know they've got really fantastic modern equipment but they sound absolute rubbish um, I find that with uh, some Europeans from um, southeastern Europe uh, I won't say any countries but they like you they'll use some great broadcast quality equipment but on SSB they've given it everything everything set to number 11 and consequently they they sound terrible for what should be a 2.7 kilohertz um, a signal, and uh, their audio bandwidth, you know, is, is is almost a megahertz or something. But uh, I like my old radios, Fritz. Uh, I, I need to update my QRZ page, but I have many, many old radios, and I I really should be restoring them. And um, you know, main 
Leah, KW, uh, Swan, Yesu, lots of old tube equipment that um, uh, you know I, I should really start working on and using a bit more. I do use some of it, but um, you know th these old radios, they are what they are. You know, we, we we switch them on, we use them, we walk away happy. But uh, it's great when someone like yourself gives me that good advice. It gives me something to work on. Back to you. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I've just opened up, um, I've just opened up the uh, uh, QRZ page actually onto your page, and uh, the very first thing I see is um, uh, is uh, right. Let me scroll back up. I was looking at your antennas. Uh, you've got the on air. I mean, the on air in great big letters. Uh, that that sets me on that path. I know what to expect next, and sure enough, I I see the the second photo. Photograph and what a fantastic audio lineup you've got there! It's um, quite incredible. Um, you, you really do. Uh, you really do like your hobby. Um, I used to run an internet radio show uh, a few years back. Uh, my, myself and a friend, we we ran the internet radio show for about uh, six seven years, and um, we had lots of audio equipment for that. But of course, that was over the internet, where you know bandwidth isn't a problem, and uh, yeah, we set everything to 11 on that why well, hi hi but uh no uh, I, I i do love those microphones they are fantastic and i know what you mean when you say the elvis presley microphone and uh just checking out there uh, in the background slightly out of focus um you've you've got some very very nice what we would call very tasty um uh, audio equipment uh fritz but you know if you're passionate then you should use it you know as i say you, you're you're one of the rare few i I think that has all of that equipment but knows how to drive it and uh, that's the good thing you know we get so many people as i said before that just you know buy this equipment they spend oh thousands and thousands of pounds euros dollars and uh, they throw so much money at it but they they just i think they miss the point and uh it looks like that uh, we've got the point i like my old rubbish and just use it and uh, you like your uh, fantastic audio set up there fritz back to you you know, it was always, it was starting with a hobby. Uh, I was working also in, in as you see, uh, on the channel Swedish, I'm coming from Vienna, from Austria. So I was working in uh, different theaters, musicals in Vienna, <coughs> audio engineering and light engineering, uh, besides, so it was a second uh, job. And uh, uh, the, the IT job was starting, the IT area was starting, and so I was moving over to the and uh, so the last 25 years of working in the more or less uh, IT branch as a communication uh, specialist in the IT area. Uh, it, uh, responsibility was uh, from the simple telephone line over to the 
electronic system, inclusive uh, satellite uplink and 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 uh, and also as a backup shortwave uh, installations because um, this was a 24/7 business um, and a billion dollar business to the customers. It was very important that. Uh, uh, that uh, we are always online uh, and 24/7, and therefore also the audio quality was very important. Uh, we was one of the first companies, uh, typical American, uh, which was working with a globally IPT telephone system. So the Cisco telephone system uh, was we one of the first uh, based the capital uh, based uh, not the capital but the headquarter was in Dallas. So the one of the first because the local telephone was without cost. We, we have uh, some bridges um, locally and nationalists, but uh, the rest was done over their own network. And therefore, as you know, it was always important to sound is good. So by the way, this is always a video conference system. But it was long, long, long time before COVID was there. And home office um, it was for us standardized uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, my team was um, was uh, nine people. Uh, I was located in Vienna and the rest was uh, on all continents. And so therefore we was uh, responsible for all this uh, communication 24-7. And uh, yeah, the hobby was always audio engineering. So I have also the possibility to make here records or whatever you want, but uh, it was um, there to bring all this equipment in a little shack, completely new build it here in this house, in this little house in the middle of nowhere in Sweden, because the shack has uh, and um, calculated approximately 300 meter on cables, Roger Mark. Yeah, Roger, Roger, that sounds fantastic. Um, I, I, I come from, um, I suppose, sometimes a, a similar background. Um, I, I left school in 1979 and started my apprenticeship with the telecommunications company, the uh, GPO, uh, the General Post Office, International Telephones. And um, I, I worked as a switch engineer and common control engineer after my apprenticeship in an international telephone exchange called Thames A in um, in London uh, it was in a building called Mondial House it was very famous it's been pulled down now uh, when I left um, a British Telecom International as it became um, or BTI actually in its final iteration I left in 92 and went to travel the world when I came home I actually uh, 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 got a job with a local cable TV company uh, as a telecom engineer and cable TV. Um, I sort of learnt the cable TV trade uh, as well as carrying on with the telecommunications. Uh, then we, in 1999, we went into digital television and I became a principal engineer in uh, the digital television sphere. So, you know, I was quite high up as an engineer in digital TV from 1999. Uh, gradually, I migrated uh, with the systems from um, uh, uh, TV, digital television, to uh, IT, you know, IT systems, because most of the digital TV is based on IT and IP transmission, etc. So that's the way it became until in the end, I was a uh, Unix engineer and um, I retired 18 months ago, so a year and a half ago. But uh, yeah, like you, you know, um, I, I was always interested in, uh, in the hobby uh, as well as part of the job. And in fact, I failed my radio amateurs examination in 1978 uh, i was only a teenager still at school 
But uh, I suppose since 1974, it, for the, the hobby for me is when I started by uh, shortwave listening and uh, actually uh, building my first radios. And uh, the, the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, just for your uh, logbook there, Fritz, just so you know, um, your signal is quite wild today now. You've been swinging uh, from a peak of almost five and nine uh, down into my noise floor at uh, about five and two. So um, incredible conditions. Um, I've just noticed uh, the timing. I, I started to video record this um, this QSO, and um, it's uh, been going 29 minutes now. So we've held up this QSO for nearly half an hour. It's quite incredible when you think that, uh, for me especially, 10 meters and uh, 12 meters was completely dead of signals, apart from your good self. So very interesting conditions. I'm just wondering uh, if now maybe i've spoken too long and uh, totally lost you uh, back to you there sa7 fkr m0 jcf Uh, SA7 FKR M0 JCF uh, Fritz, an absolute pleasure to have this QSO with you. It's been uh, very, very good indeed. Uh, I'm very, very surprised at the, the, the way that it's held up between us. And I did drop into social media, a Facebook of uh, radio groups that I belong to, to say that I was on frequency and having this long QSO. And absolutely no one else can hear you. I've told them the frequency. And I'm being told there's nothing in Scotland, um, there's nothing in the county of Staffordshire, which is in the Midlands or the West Midlands. So it looks like just the southeast of England is is the only place that's really hearing you. Uh, the rest of the UK doesn't seem to be hearing your signal. So it's a very, very tight and a very, very interesting propagation. As I say, uh, you peaked just under five and nine, and I think the lowest you went was Santa. Santiago 2, which was in my noise floor. I've got about an S2 noise floor today, and uh, maybe that's because of the sun's activity. But um, certainly, I could still read you. I mean, you were definitely uh, Radio 5 uh, throughout. But as you say, it's uh, time to maybe wrap it up before I lose you. Um, I will say also, um, if you had the uh, time later, and it's the thing that you do, I will post this QSO to my YouTube 
YouTube uh, page. My YouTube channel is uh, called M Zero JCF Ham Radio, and I'll tag your call sign in the subject line. Um, I'll probably uh, upload it uh, later on uh, this evening, uh, early evening, and uh, it'll be there so you can actually analyse from um, your end uh, how you sounded on this radio, and you can see me uh, gradually reducing the uh, tuning frequency down uh, to keep you sounding human. Uh, thanks a lot, and in my very poorest German, I say uh, vielen Dank für das Kuso, uh, Fritz, and uh, ich hoffe uh, Sie bald zu treffen, and auf Wiedersehen, mein Freund, uh, 73, good luck. Roger, Mark, wonderful program, thank you very much. Uh, so, sitting in the room, I couldn't find you to understand you. <laughs> yeah, it's time to go to your... Uh, <coughs> Design, mein Freund. Auf Wiedersehen and uh, 73. Danke schön.